On today's episode, the ISS is in trouble. China preps for a moon walk and an asteroid trip, while New Glenn inches closer to launch. Beginning with NASA, who appears to have been hiding something from us about the International Space Station. Not only is it leaking, it's leaking pretty badly, and there's probably not anything that anyone can do to fix it. A new report published by NASA on September 26 confirms that management responsible for operating the International Space Station are highly concerned about a small module on the Russian side of the ISS. It's been leaking air out into space, apparently for years now. The PRK module is essentially a little tunnel that connects the Progress spacecraft airlock to the main Russian habitat module, Zvezda. Both Russian and American officials have reportedly known about the leak in the PRK since September of 2019. At first, the leak was relatively minor, less than one pound of atmosphere escaping per day. But in February 2024, NASA identified an increase in the leakage, reaching 2.4 pounds per day. And then by April 2024, the leak had increased to 3.7 pounds per day. What's even more troubling is that even after years of investigation, neither the Russians nor US officials have been able to identify the root cause of the leak. Apparently, their best guess right now now is either internal or external welds. The current plan for mitigating the atmosphere loss seems to be just keeping the door closed on the Zvezda module that leads to the airlock. Though eventually, if the leak gets any worse, which seems inevitable, then the docking port will need to be permanently sealed off. Now, the Russians do have a total of four ports on their side of the ISS, double the Americans, and I believe that's largely because the Russian segments provide most of the power, propulsion, and life support for the station, which requires more supply missions in addition to crew transfers. It's important to remember that what we're talking about here are microscopic cracks in the structure. It's not a catastrophic failure, not yet, but NASA insiders seem to believe that it could get there in the near future. According to to a report from Ars Technica that cites anonymous sources within NASA, the Russian leaks are now scoring a 5x5 five five on the agency's risk matrix. Basically the way this works is that you have one axis for the likelihood of a problem to happen and one axis for the consequence of that problem. So you can have a problem that's very likely to happen but very low consequence, like a clogged space toilet. Or you could have something that's very consequential but just as unlikely to happen, like getting hit by an asteroid. If Eric Berger's sources are correct, which they often are, then NASA believes the likelihood of a worsening leak are very high, and the consequences will be very bad for station operations. Apparently the term catastrophic failure has been thrown around already. We know that the ISS is getting old, so that's no secret. It's about to celebrate a 25-year anniversary. And we know that it's scheduled to reach a final demise by the year 2030. But it's also entirely possible that we're not really being told the true cost and potential risk of everything that's going to be required to keep the ISS going until that time. China has just revealed their new lunar spacesuit design prototype, the nation's strongest signal yet that they are prepared for a crewed moon landing of their own in this decade. The new extravehicular activity suit was debuted by the China Manned Space Agency on September 28th, with a live demonstration that included a person walking around on stage and even performing a couple of squats in the suit, which is pretty impressive. If you remember when we saw Axiom reveal NASA's Artemis 3 lunar suit last year, that guy did have to use a support stick to perform similar activities. But he was also bent all the way down to the floor and he stayed on stage for a much longer time, so it's not exactly exactly apples to apples. The Chinese suit is described as having a comprehensively protective fabric that shields against the harsh thermal environment and lunar dust. The helmet features a panoramic anti-glare visor and is equipped with both wide-angle and telephoto cameras. The suit's functions are then managed by an integrated control console on the chest. The red stripes that we see are a reference to Chinese artwork that depicts the flying Asparagus, which is a celestial being in Buddhist culture. The overall design of the suit is supposed to draw on the style of traditional Chinese armor. 
China's current plan for a lunar excursion will have two of their astronauts doing a six-hour walk on the moon. This will be aided by a planned lunar rover that will have a range of up to 10 kilometers with a top speed of 25 kilometers per hour. Officials say that these new suits are entirely designed and built in China, which is unlike the nation's current low Earth orbit spacesuit, which is heavily inspired and derived from an old Russian design. These new lunar suits will join China's in development Long March 10 rocket booster and a new deep space crew capsule to support their current goals of setting foot on the moon in 2029. Imagine having a pen on your desk that not only writes beautifully, but also hovers in place defying gravity. That's exactly what you get with the hover pen from Novium. This isn't just any pen, it's a piece of art inspired by space, designed to stimulate curiosity and creativity. The hover pen interstellar sits at a precise 23.5 degree angle, a nod to the Earth's axial tilt, and is available in stunning finishes like Space Black and Mars Magma. It's not just stylish, it's also refillable, ensuring a smooth, unmatched writing experience every time, and it's not just us who think so. The Hover Pen Interstellar was recognized as one of the best inventions of 2022 by Time Magazine. What's even cooler, the Premium Edition includes a meteorite shard that's over 4.5 billion years old, making it older than the Earth itself. Imagine owning a piece of space right on your desk. Or if you prefer a fountain pen, Novium offers the Hover Pen Future with a 2-in-1 fountain and rollerball pen interchangeable tip. So whether you're treating yourself or looking for the perfect gift, the Hover Pen is a timeless choice. And right now, Novium is offering my viewers 10% off on all Hover Pens plus free shipping to most countries. Just use the discount code SPACERACE at checkout. The QR code is on the screen and you'll find all the links in the description below. Trust me, once you have the Hover Pen spinning on your desk, you'll never see writing the same way again. In 2025, China will launch Tianwen-2, an ambitious mission aimed at sampling a near-Earth asteroid. This marks China's first attempt to collect material from an asteroid and is part of its broader deep space exploration agenda. Tianwen-2 will target the asteroid 2016 HO3, also known as Kamo Oalewa, a small quasi-satellite of the Earth. After delivering these samples to Earth, the spacecraft will conduct a gravity assist maneuver using our planet's gravitational field to propel itself towards a second destination, the main belt comet 311P Panstars. Kamo Oalewa, which means the oscillating celestial fragment in Hawaiian, is an intriguing object. It's classified as a quasi-satellite because its orbit closely follows Earth's, but it's not gravitationally bound as a true moon would be. Instead, it appears to loop around our planet while actually orbiting the sun. This peculiar behavior makes it a unique target for study. The asteroid's diameter is estimated to be between 40 and 100 meters, and one hypothesis suggests that it could be a fragment of our own moon, potentially ejected during a massive impact event millions of years ago. Studying this asteroid could provide clues about our own lunar history as well as the early conditions in the solar system. The Tianwen-2 mission aims to analyze the surface composition, geological structure, and physical properties of the asteroid using a suite of 10 scientific instruments. These include visible and infrared spectrometers, thermal radiation spectrometers, multispectral cameras, and radar. The ultimate goal is to deepen our understanding of how small bodies like this formed and evolved. One key challenge in asteroid sampling missions is the low gravity environment, which complicates landing and collecting material. Tianwen-2 will employ two different sampling methods to overcome this challenge, the touch and go technique and the novel anchor and attach approach. Touch and go is a technique that involves the spacecraft making brief controlled contact with an asteroid surface to collect samples. The spacecraft descends, touches the surface for just a few seconds, and then retracts without landing. This approach minimizes the risks associated with prolonged interaction in a low-gravity environment, where maintaining stability is very challenging. It's proven effective in past missions, such as NASA's OSIRIS-REx on asteroid Bennu and JAXA's Hayabusa-2 on asteroid Ryugu, making it a reliable choice for quick and efficient sample retrieval. 
Unlike touch and go, anchor and attach is a novel method that involves the spacecraft securely anchoring itself to the asteroid's surface before beginning the sampling process. By using mechanical arms or harpoons, the probe attaches itself firmly, ensuring better control during the sample collection. This technique, though untested in previous missions, could provide greater stability and precision, especially on smaller, irregular-shaped asteroids with weak gravity. Utilizing both techniques not only offers a backup in case one method encounters issues, but also serves as a valuable demonstration of this new technology. After dropping off the Camo Oalewa samples to Earth, Tianwen-2 will embark on a multi-year journey to its second target, 311P Panstars. This comet, located in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, is a rare object that exhibits both cometary and asteroidal characteristics. Studying 311P could reveal insights into the volatile materials present in these regions and the role that they play in the transportation of water and organic materials across the early solar system. China's deep space ambitions go beyond this mission. Plans for a Mars sample return mission, Tianwen-3, around 2028, and a Jupiter exploration mission, Tianwen-4, around 2030, are already in development. Additionally, the Chinese National Space Administration has emphasized that data from these missions, including samples from Tianwen-2, will be shared internationally. Blue Origin is making significant progress towards the launch of its New Glenn rocket, a next-generation heavy-lift vehicle designed to compete in the evolving commercial space industry. Recently, Blue Origin successfully tested the upper stage of the New Glenn rocket. The two BE-3U engines fired for 15 seconds, marking the first time the vehicle was operated as an integrated system. This test validates interactions between the vehicle systems and ground equipment, serving as a critical milestone ahead head for the vehicles made in flight. New Glenn is a heavy-lift two-stage rocket standing at 98 meters tall, with a diameter of 7 meters. The first stage is powered by seven BE-4 engines using a combination of liquefied natural gas and liquid oxygen. The second stage relies on a single vacuum-optimized BE-3U engine. New Glenn can lift 45 metric tons to low Earth orbit and 13 metric tons to geostationary transfer orbit. One of its standout features is a large 7-meter diameter fairing, which offers double the volume of traditional 5-meter fairings, making it ideal for accommodating large payloads and complex mission profiles. The rocket's first stage is designed for reusability, capable of being flown up to 25 times, and the goal of landing vertically on a moving ship in the Atlantic Ocean. When talking about heavy lift rockets, it's inevitable to compare New Glenn with SpaceX's Starship, given their similar ambitions in transforming space access. New Glenn represents a major advancement, but it faces strong competition from SpaceX. Starship has over double the low Earth orbit capability of New Glenn, and nearly eight times the geostationary transfer orbit capability with in orbit refueling. Additionally, Starship generates 16.5 million pounds of thrust at liftoff, more than four times that of New Glenn. Despite the competition, Blue Origin is making strides to get New Glenn off the ground. Speaking at World Space Business Week, Jarrett Jones, a senior advisor for New Glenn, confirmed that the company is preparing to install the seven BE-4 engines into the rocket's first stage. They plan to move the booster to the pad for a static fire test very soon, with a launch-ready rocket expected by November 2024. The first mission, designated NG-1, will no longer be carrying NASA's escapade mission to Mars as originally planned. Instead, it will serve as a test flight for Blue Origin's newly announced Blue Ring Orbital Transfer Vehicle. Blue Ring is designed to support a variety of in-space services and has a robust design with 12 docking ports and a delta V of over 3,000 meters per second, providing it with extensive maneuverability between orbits. Its primary role is to deploy satellites in desired orbits, but it can also also host payloads of up to 3,000 kilograms, or even refuel other spacecraft. With a top deck capability of carrying payloads weighing up to two and a half tons, it's designed to offer a range of in-space services from transportation to acting as a fuel depot and even data relay and in-space cloud computing. 
Blue Origin's New Glen and Blue Ring projects are poised to address the growing demands of space infrastructure and in-orbit services. With the successful upper stage test and the upcoming static fire of the booster, the company is on track to demonstrate New Glen's capabilities by the end of 2024.